welcome to the next lecture in electrical machines we were discussing the synchronous motors and in this particular lecture we are going to focus on the effect of increase load with constant excitation so since the excitation is constant and the load is varied so we will keep the excitation constant and load varied to understand the dynamics of the synchronous motor we also know that the resistance of the armature is very very less than the synchronous reactance so it means that the armature resistance we can take it to be zero if the armature resistance we take it to be zero it means the phase angle between the resultant emf and the armature current will be close to 90 degree because our armature resistance is zero so we will discuss the effect of varying load with constant excitation and excitation again we are going to take under the three different cases that is the normal excitation under excitation and over excitation so first we will focus on normal excitation so what happened under the normal excitation at light load condition so at light load condition the value of the torque angle is very very small it means the resultant emf is also small and the current is also small so this comes from the general principle of the synchronous motor and we will discuss uh, with two cases so in the first case we will be taking as one and what happened with the change in the load condition so the power factor angle is also small which means that the power factor is large so next when the load increased what happened so this is under the light load condition the phenomena occurring inside the synchronous motor so what happened if the load is increased so if the load is increased it means that the motor must develop more torque by drawing more current so we have already discussed this thing in the last class as well that when the load in the synchronous motor will increase then the current will be more drawn to maintain the more torque but unlike the dc motor the synchronous motor cannot draw more current by decreasing the speed hence ev becomes hence ev because both are constant we know that in case of a dc motor uh, we can vary the speed and we can vary the emf to vary the current but which is not possible in case of a synchronous motor because in the synchronous motor the speed remains constant and the excitation also remains more or less constant so what happened is that the current will not increase like that now what happens then so uh, load is increased it means we require more torque and we also know that current will increase in case of a uh, synchronous motor but we can't change the speed and we can't change the uh, back emf also because both are constant so what will happen then the rotor will fall back in phase because when the load is increased obviously the torque angle will increase so obviously in the second case that is when the load is increased the torque angle is increasing it means the resultant emf increase considerably so the resultant emf which was small in under the light load condition has increased considerably when the load has increased because the torque angle or the rotor angle has fall in phase this means that the current will be more and hence the torque will be more so due to the increase of the resultant emf the current drawn by the synchronous motor has increased which will help in motor to draw more amount of torque now the power factor angle between the voltage and the current has increased so the power factor has decreased so we can see that at the light load condition when cos pi was very large it has decreased when the load has increased however one thing point to be noted is that the increase in the armature current is very very more or greater than the decrease in the power factor to increase the torque so the current drawn by the synchronous motor when the load increased under the constant excitation is much more compared to the decrease in the power factor so if we see in the form of a phasor for a normal excitation we have ev is equal to v 
and I1 that is the armature current and the first case which was lagging the voltage V due to the increase in the load we can compare the two currents IA2 and IA1 and we can see that much greater is there in the increase in the armature current as compared to the power factor angle. So if we compare the power factor angle for the first case, so here we have the phi1 and here we have the phi2. So the change in the power factor angle is much less as compared to the increase in the current magnitude. The EV value remains uh, constant for both the cases. And if we see the resultant EMF ER1 and ER2 for the light load condition and for the increase in the load condition, we see that ER2 has increased much more as compared to ER1. So this is the general phenomena that is occurring under the normal excitation. Then what happened under the under excitation case? So under the under excitation case, we know that the back EMF is less than the supply voltage. Here, a small load will result in small alpha, which is the torque angle and the current will lag the voltage by an increase in the phase angle phi1. It means the power factor is very poor because it is an under excitation case. Unlike the normal excitation case, the very very increase in the armature current for developing the same power because of poor power factor. Now when the load has increased, the resultant EMF will increase it means the armature current will increase which will decrease the power factor angle and the power factor will increase. Both increase in the armature current as well as increase in the power factor results in the increase in the power developed to meet the load requirement. So change in the power factor is more than the change in the armature current. So in case of under excitation case we see that change in the power factor is much more as compared to change in the armature current. However, here also we see that there is an increase in the armature current for the increase in the load. So if we see in the phasor diagram under the under excitation case where the supply voltage is more than the back EMF, we see the cases case 1 and case 2 keeping the EV value constant for both the cases, we see that the magnitude of IA1 and IA2. So IA2 is more than IA1. So when the load has increased, it means the current has increased. But the change in the angle is much more as compared to the change in the magnitude of the current. This indicates that under the under excitation case, change in the power factor is more compared to the change in the current but there is an increase in the current. Now we will discuss the over excitation case. So over excitation case we know that the back EMF will be more than the supply voltage. So what happened? So first we will see what happened in the light load condition. Under the light load condition the value of alpha 1 is small. So the torque angle or the coupling angle is small for the light load condition but the current is very very more than leading the voltage by an angle of larger phase angle that is phi1. Like under excitation case when more load is there power factor improves and approaches unity. So as we have discussed for the under excitation case similarly in the over excitation case when the load has increased power factor will improve and it will reach close to unity value. So increase in the armature current to give more power to meet the load requirement. So again when the load has increased, the current has increased to meet the power requirement. So the decrease in the phase angle or the increase in the power factor at a faster rate than the current to meet the load. So both under excitation and over excitation we see that the power factor angle is dominating compared to the increase in the armature current. So if we see the phasor diagram of EV greater than v, v that is under the over excitation case keeping the value of the back EMF constant for the two cases we see that if we compare the current IA1 and IA2 for both the cases although the IA2 is more than IA1 but they are more or less same 
and if we compare the angle between uh, the voltage and the current for the two cases there is a comparatively more change in the power factor angle compared to the value of the current also if we compare the resultant emf er1 and er2 the er2 will always be more than the er1 so after discussing these three points for the normal excitation under excitation and over excitation will draw some summary and the important points so what is the conclusion so when the load has increased so with the increase in the load what is happening increase in the load will result in the increase in the armature current regardless of excitation so excitation may be of any form whether it is a normal excitation over excitation or under excitation when the load has increased obviously the current has to increase to meet the torque requirement now the two cases that is the under excitation case and over excitation case for the motor the power factor tends to approach unity so we have seen that under the under excitation and over excitation case the current has increased but the power factor is playing a dominating role and it is approaching close to unity change in the power factor is greater than the armature current so although the armature current is increased but if we see the power factor change it is much more as compared to the current however for the normal excitation case if we see change in the armature current is quite greater than the power factor which tends to become increasingly lagging so under the normal excitation case the power factor is going more and more lagging with the increase in the armature current so we have discussed the case of keeping the excitation constant changing the load that is the increase in the load what happened when to the torque armature current the power factor for different cases like normal excitation over excitation and under excitation so see you in the next lecture thank you for